SSL, or Secure Sockets Layer, is a method of encrypting internet traffic. But what does this actually mean? It's all based on trust. The web has collectively agreed to trust a few big multinational companies. These guys are called certificate authorities, and they're responsible for verifying that companies are genuine. Let's imagine you've started a business called Vulcanize, and you want this to be a super secure service. So you want to offer your users full session SSL encryption to protect their privacy. So you go to a certificate authority and say, I own Vulcanize.com and I need an SSL certificate for my web server. They will then do some investigating to confirm that you are who you say you are. They will also check that you do in fact own Vulcanize.com and that you maintain control of it. After they have finished their background checks, they'll grant you a certificate and something else called a public key. A key in encryption terms is essentially just a prime number. For those who missed that class, a prime number is one that is only wholly divisible by itself and one. This public key is the key to the whole SSL process. When someone visits your site, they receive your public key. They check this key against a list to make sure you are who you say you are. Once they confirm this is a valid key, they agree to use it in the next step. And this is where it gets tricky. Vulcanize generates a private key, and so does the client. These are both random prime numbers. They then use a modulus function to calculate a result that has many potential combinations to achieve the same result. Hmm, I can see that I'm losing you here. Let's think of it this way. Vulcanize has been assigned the public key, a very specific shade of blue. The client asks to see Vulcanize's public key, so Vulcanize sends the public blue colour. The client then mixes this shade of blue with their own random private colour, shown here as yellow, to give, in this example, a specific shade of green. Vulcanize also mixes their blue with a random private colour, red, to give, in this example, a specific shade of purple. They then share these public mixed colours of green and purple with each other. Note that they have never shared their personal private colours at any point. They then mix these shared colours with their own private colour again to come up with the same shared colour. If someone was trying to intercept these colours to also gain access to this secret shared colour, they would be unable to end up at the same result as they're missing a key ingredient. In this case, one of the private colours of red or yellow. The trick is that while it's easy to mix colours, it's really hard to figure out which specific shades were used to make them. So anyone intercepting the transmissions wouldn't be able to work out the original colour, or prime numbers in this case. So now the two participants have a unique shared secret number that they use to encipher their communications. Modern SSL protection, if implemented securely, would take longer than the age of the universe to guarantee breaking.